everybody. It's Lisa Derby Odin, uh, Project Development Coordinator with MassMEP, and I'm here today with Kevin Young, who's the Vice President of Corporate Development and Medical at Web Industries. So it's great to have you here today, Kevin, and I'm looking forward to our conversation, and I'm wondering if you can just go ahead and share a little bit more about yourself and about Web Industries before we dive into those questions. Sure, Lisa, and uh, thanks very much for having me here today. It's a real pleasure. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm Vice President of Corporate Development and Medical at Web Industries. Web Industries is a 51-year-old uh, company, Massachusetts-based. Uh, interesting start from a gentleman by the name of Bob Fulton, who uh, really wanted to be a minister, and a friend told him once he could minister by hiring people. So 50 years ago, he borrowed $10,000 from family and friends and started in a, a basement uh, out in uh, Framingham slitting paper. At that time, we were known as Slitters of Stuff. Uh, <laughs> today, the company has nine locations around the globe, three in Europe, six in the United States, 800 uh, employees, and um, we're an employee-owned company. Bob felt that his success was driven by the employees of the company, and he sold the company uh, to the employees. So uh, we're 800 employee owners strong, uh, and uh, we got our start in Massachusetts, and um, Massachusetts is where we're making some uh, great product today for COVID-19, fighting uh, to save lives in the United States and develop the tests that are going to open up the economy. You know, what a great story that is, you know, all the way from the beginning, the minister thing, and then slitters of stuff. I love that description. Um, yeah, Bob, Bob was an interesting gentleman. Uh, he was strong in his faith. He really believed in Christian values, and he founded the company on those values. And today, we still observe those 12 founding values that uh, were put in place quite some time ago. And uh, it's really made for a rich history for our company. And um, he's uh, created a lot of wealth in our employees too. He was true visionary. That's great. Um, okay, so, so let's jump into this. Um, you know, I know that you've been an essential employer uh, during these COVID-19 days. And so for, for a couple of like, here and in France, right? From what right. I could tell, right. yeah. Um, yeah, and so, um, you know, obviously we'd like to focus primarily on, on Massachusetts, but um, not necessarily to the exclusion of the other sites as well. Can you talk about some of your successes or discoveries, like some positive things that have come out of your efforts of being an essential employer? Yeah, I think the first thing that I would talk about is that um, our ability to stay open as an essential company and keep nine factories running in today's environment was no small feat, as you can imagine, yeah. yep. uh, and keeping 800 employees uh, working. And that provides excellent jobs, good salaries and benefits for these employees along with their, their families. And you know, you have to give recognition to the government's PPP program, too, that helped us to allow, it gave us that uh, basis of funds that we could continue to operate and develop our strategies to combat uh, COVID-19, if you will. And again, if you think about what that means to stay open in a time like this and ensure worker safety, that became a rallying cry around our company. So we took extreme measures in the areas of personal protective equipment, social distancing, and our protocols for keeping our factories clean and safe for our employees, but also for their families too. Uh, and I think those were some of the early learnings that we had. And you know, we've also had to learn how are we gonna hire 125 new employees <laughs> because of the demand we've had for our core competency in our Holliston, Massachusetts facility for making lateral flow immunology tests. And these are essential to COVID-19. And, uh, you know, so learning new tools like Indeed and how do you set up a series of virtual interview rooms 
where you have four people doing interviews in four different rooms in half hour slots from nine in the morning to five o'clock at night to try and hire 125 people. I mean, it was big learning for all of us. And it's just great to see the technology that exists in the world. Like you and I are having a Zoom call. I swear, you know, I said this 16 weeks ago when we started working at home, I joined a Zoom call. And it hasn't ended yet, you know? And I think <laughs> a lot of us feel that way. So oh, def- a, a lot of changes going on, a lot of new things that we've had to discuss and learn about. And um, it's all about just, you know, kind of rolling with the punches, if you will. So can you talk a little bit about what those, cha- some, are there other challenges? I know you mentioned that the challenge of the hiring of 125 people, which is certainly, that's a, big challenge for sure. Were there any other that have arisen and any creative solutions that yeah. you may have come across? Yes. Yeah, there sure were. Well, you know, there was no roadmap for the pandemic, right? Who yeah. could have seen what this COVID-19 would do, not just to individuals, but companies and the economy as a whole. So while there was no roadmap, I think one thing we learned is being agile was exceptionally important. And when we saw the devastation that was happening to our aerospace business, because more than 50% of Webb's business comes from aerospace. We're one of, we're a major yeah. supplier into um, the top two OEMs in the world, Boeing and Airbus, as wow. well as companies like GE for engine parts. So we've all seen what's happened. This ship sets on a monthly basis have declined dramatically and as has our business. Uh, But we were able to pivot. We've made significant investments in the Holliston facility over the last six years into developing this core competency in lateral flow immunology. And so when one of the largest medical device companies in the world came to us to make COVID-19 tests for them, we were prepared and ready. And we've invested significantly since that period in time in early April uh, to where we'll be scaling and producing tests next week and shipping them. So it's a real testament to our employees and how they responded. Um, We were prepared. Uh, That was uh, a good thing. And I think also the resiliency to switch quickly. Um, It was a company-wide effort. We've taken our best people from our aerospace division from our industrial and consumer business and brought them into medical to help us, you know, pivot and address the needs. And everything I read, and as recently as yesterday in the Atlantic Journal, uh, the government is going to need hundreds of millions of tests per month. And unfortunately, the supply chain is not ready for that in the United States. So one of the other things we're doing as a contract manufacturing organization is helping companies onshore their medical device production. Because as you've heard, I'm sure, and read, so much of that had been moved to the Far East. And now the US government would really like to see us take control of our supply chain. You know, get those essential components manufactured here domestically. So we're actively working with a number of companies also to see how do we help them do that. That is great. That's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we don't often hear about. So that is wonderful. And uh, I just want to touch back on, you know, your um, compliment to your employees. And and it seems like a lot of them have transferable skills and adaptable attitudes in order to be able to make that pivot. I Um, think that's a great point. And just to elaborate on that a little bit, being employee owners, there's a sense of pride in what you do. Yes. And it's not just about that you're making a dollar for yourself. An employee reflected to me the other day when he said, you know, Kevin, it's not just about that we've got good jobs and we're making an earning for our family. We feel proud that we're making COVID-19 tests that are gonna save lives and open up the economy in the United States. So it's a testament. and. We've had people that have joined their colleagues in Holliston from Vermont, from Atlanta and Denton, Texas, and uh, even from Fort Wayne, Indiana to help us get this going. Wow, that's great. 
yeah, it's, it's exciting. Hey, are there um, any changes in legislation or regulation that would uh, make confronting a crisis like this easier in the future? You know, that's a, that's a great question, and yes. Um, I can comment on that from two perspectives. Number one, if we had federal standards around how you combat something like COVID-19, it would have made it much easier for a company like Webb. Imagine having facilities in six states and you have to adapt to the different oh, laws and regulations God. being put out by each governor. Now, what Webb did early on is we said, what are the best practices that will ensure safety of our employees? And in most cases, our procedures and policies went well beyond even what the federal government was suggesting, not mandating. We mm -hmm. should be clear about that. And then if there was any one state in particular that took an even more aggressive stance, we made that the priority in all of our plants. So that gave consistency and it was easy for our employees to understand that. The second area where I think the government, um, and they're learning on the fly a little bit, um, they've made considerable monies, Lisa, available for the development of tests. But it's one thing to develop a test and then not have the manufacturing capability to get the test to market. And that's where I think we've been in touch with uh, many of our congressmen and women in the states in which we have factories. For example, um, we've been in touch with uh, Representative Dykema in the uh, Boston area has just done an outstanding job helping us. She set us up with Mass ERT, we're in the process of getting grants. And I can't say enough about how she and her office have responded and been so, so readily available and willing to help. Likewise, at the federal aid uh, level, we have contacted Congressman uh, Catherine Clark's office. And what we see at the federal level, and we've had talks with Bob Woodwall down in uh, Atlanta, is that they did make money available for testing, but they haven't done enough to make the manufacturing capability, that supply chain that's going to get the product out into the marketplace. And that's where Web is really focusing its ear, its efforts to right. bring that manufacturing capability um, to the attention of the federal and state governments. That's great, though, uh, you know, that's great insight into that situation. Thanks, Kevin. So, uh, you know, do you have a crystal ball there? Uh, you know, like what things might look like over the next three months or, you know, how about the next year? What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, <laughs> I see I, you laughing about that. <laughs> I was just thinking if I had a crystal ball, I'd probably play the lottery and retire. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't have to deal with as much of this. <laughs> no, you know what I think we're going to see for the next three months, um, we've all read the papers. We see the, the trends are not going in the right direction yeah. in the United States. We see hot spots developing all over the nation. I think what we're going to see, and I know what we're going to do as a company, is we're going to continue our crisis management team that meets every day at 930, making sure that we ensure our workers' safety. It's summertime, right? Yep. People want to get out. They want to socialize. They want to return to normalcy, if you will. But things are going to be different. I think we're going to see, um, I know for a fact, we're asking our employees to take responsibility for their actions this summer. Protect themselves, protect their families, and protect their friends. And most importantly, when they come back to work, ensure the safety of their colleagues. So responsible behavior. I think that's going to continue well through the next three months and through the summer. As for the next year, um, I really believe we're going to see more of what we've been living. I think this is going to continue. I think yeah. this is the new norm, at least until a vaccination is available. And I think you as well as I'm sure many of your listeners have heard that the supply chain behind developing a vaccination has to be put in place. It needs to be mobilized now. Even if they have a vaccine in six months, just think about what will it take to make 4 billion tests? That, I'm sorry, 4 billion vaccines. 
so that everybody can be inoculated. That manufacturing supply chain is just starting to ramp up and get in place. It's much the same we see with testing to open the economy. The government through the NIH has stated that we would like to have hundreds of millions of tests over the next year that core competency of manufacturing capability has to be built up. And that's where Webb is hoping we can play a really big part. And it's all starting here in Massachusetts. That's great. Hey, I have one last question. I know that you sure. mentioned the uh, MERT um, and working with them in, in this uh, process. And I know MassMEP is a part of that emergency response team. So can you That's say a right. little bit about how Web Industries has maybe worked with MEP in the past or through the MERT even? Yeah, great. so right now, you know, the, the MERT grants are administered uh, and we've applied for both training, uh, which we're in discussions and have a meeting again tomorrow with them. They've been fantastic. Uh, so we're looking for uh, the maximum training grant of 80,000. And then um, they also have a, they have a funding program for equipment. So we have applied for funding so that we can put additional equipment to ramp faster. Um, you know, and they're under the auspices of the Massachusetts Technical Collaborative and Massachusetts Bio Life Sciences. So great group of individuals and people that are coming together to try and do well for the state of Massachusetts. So. We're really appreciative of their efforts and what they're doing. Um, I think I mentioned before we got on the air here that I think Governor Baker's just been doing an outstanding job uh, leading Massachusetts through this uh, terrible pandemic. And uh, I think that's why we see our rates are on the decline. And I saw the other day, three of the four measures that they track uh, continuing to trend down for a two week period. And the fourth measure is stable. So that's really good. Um, and uh, so we look forward to continuing to work with Mass uh, ERT and um, see how uh, together we're gonna make more COVID-19 tests to get this economy moving again. That's great. Um, you know, I know one of the things I've said is that I won't feel comfortable until there's adequate testing and the vaccines. And so, you know, we've, had a little conversation about both of those here today, and I'm glad to hear that there's some work being done in that direction. Of course, I knew there was, but I haven't had the pleasure to speak with somebody doing that work directly. So I wanna thank you so much for taking your time, Kevin, to join us today. And um, you know, maybe we'll have a, a future conversation again when may, things are, are in, headed in a different direction. Well, I would like that, Lisa, and it's been a real pleasure to come on and speak with you today. And uh, thanks for bringing uh, the story of web industry to your readers. Uh, we think we've got a great company and, and uh, we've got openings for 125 new people. So if any of your listeners uh, have skills and they wanna come and, and earn a good living at working at a great company, uh, you know, look up web industries on the web, please. <laughs>